Hey there, and today I was going to talk about uh, creating what rain weather effect in your game. I uh, saw something similar to this in, in the game called Swords of Ditto. Uh, I like the, the overall effect, uh, the, the blue, the rain coming down, and the splashes. splashes. So this is just to, to go over that. We're going to use surfaces, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about how, to, how to surfaces work a little bit. Um, so let's get started. So I'm going to switch out the actual room we start in so we can show that there's only just a few things in there. Uh, we created three different objects. One is just our, our regular object controller and that does the initialization. Uh, a time of day object which is actually what is going to draw the surface and a rain generator which is going to create each drop that comes down and then We'll go over these. So as far as the rain, uh, I created three sprites, um, two different splashes, and then the rain coming down. The rain is just uh, one by four, um, a, a short one and a long one, and I keep them white. Uh, that way you can tint them depending on, on the way you'd want them to look. And then two splashes. Uh, one is a a circular splash. Uh, the other is a more vertical splash. So this is more for when it like uh, hits a hits a surface versus hitting hitting the ground. We then so the couple objects that we have um, is the controller. So on the really on the all that this is going to do as far as contributing to everything is make sure we call our globals. There's nothing, the rest of this is just like creating the boy in the room um, and adjusting some heights. So in general, this is just going to, I only had the controller in there to call the globals. So the globals are going to create three different variables. So I have one that says whether it's raining or not. I have one that's going to create a global surface, and that's what how we're, what we're going to draw to in order to give us that, that rain effect. And then the current room. I use this so when we go into like an interior and then come out, we don't get we don't have to draw. You can adjust the size of the, the surface as well as whether or not you're actually wanting to, to draw on it. So the next item we have in the room that contributes is the time of day object. I created a time of day object and you can put this all in, in a rain generator. Um, I use this because I was going to create a day and night cycle. Uh, so day, evening, and night. So what this is going to do is it doesn't need to but it'll set the, the global, call the global variables. And I, this time of day I'm going to keep persistent and that means it exists in all rooms that I have it in. Um, and then, so I have it as in the interior. That way, during depending on what time of day, you can go into a room, uh, let's say, in the evening, and then come out in the morning, and it'll keep track of the day. But that's not really what we're using this for. This is so this will create the surface. Uh, we we're gonna do a script check to make sure we've created it, set the surface, and then reset back to target. We're gonna clear it out. That's, these are the, the, the only things we care about as far as time of day in our, and including setting our current room in terms of rendering this uh, surface. And the other is the actual draw event. So we're making sure the draw, the surface that we, global surface we created exists. Uh, if not, we're going to go ahead and create it. Otherwise, if we're in the current view, uh, depending on if so, if it's raining or if it's evening and day, so this is uh, particular to the day of time of day, but we'll get into that in another video. We're going to go ahead and draw the surface. So we're going to create it and draw it, um, or just draw it outright. So what I'll go ahead and do this because we're going to create it, we'll want to draw it. The other is the rain generator. So our rain generator uh, is 
where a lot of it, where the drops get generated. So when we create this, we're gonna tell it to start raining. Um, probably you'll need something to control the rain on as far as when it starts and stops. For our purposes in the video, we're just gonna use this timer to start it. We're also going to start a, a lightning cycle, so every so often we'll uh, draw some lightning. And you'll, re depending on the environment or the mood you want, uh, you'll have to control that. So we'll set the global, uh, when we first put this in the room, we'll set to, to raining equals false. But here's our first alarm where we're actually going to set it to true and then start a sound uh, that's playing for the rain. Then I have some variables for lightning, uh, whether it's lightning, so this will determine whether we're drying. So right now we're not drying lightning. Um, how quickly it fades um, with a fade rate. Um, so this is saying we want it to fade over a quarter of a second. So this will create our fade rate, some steps, and then this is a type, and I'll show you that in a little bit. So we have a rain rate, how many drops are created every step, how fast they, they fall down, uh, how how bright they are, um, and then the current room. So before we we have this alarm that turns on the rain, we'll have this alarm one. It, it's not actually called during the cycle because we're not trying to turn it off, but if you're gonna turn it off, it, it, it'll set it to rain and go false, and then it'll start up the rain again. Uh, right now I'm not using that. So the lightning, when that gets called, It'll set it to true, and you'll see in our step events that we're actually drawing out the lightning. Uh, we play the thunder, uh, start the step process to, uh, to make it fade. And then this will be set up the next time we uh, create another thunder 20, 30 seconds later. So the step event is where the bulk of the drawing goes for the rain. Uh, so when we create a surface, that's what's going to be rendered. Uh, so we're going to basically take a picture that has nothing in it and then we're going to draw some objects into the, the picture and then render that picture. So that's really what the, the time of day is drawing that, that picture we're, we're drawing. And this rain generator is actually manipulating that. What we're doing here is the rain generator is going to either do the lightning effect or just the blue, the blue background. It actually isn't drawing the raindrops. So what we do is we call this uh, script. I don't think I've shown that yet. So the script will be similar. Instead of doing it in multiple places, I, I create one script. It's just making sure the, the surface exists and it, that we haven't changed rooms. Because if we want to change rooms, we want to resize our surface that we're going to draw. So if we've so if the surface exists, we're probably just going to uh, free it up and recreate it. And then if it didn't exist, we're just going to go ahead and create it. Um, then we're going to reset the target and make sure that we're in set to the current room. So then the surface target, so we're going to set the drawing to make sure we're drawing on the surface that we created that exists. Um, so if we're going to it's going to be raining. We're going to go ahead and set the color to a blue. Uh, set the transparency so it's it overlays everything, but it's not it doesn't overwhelm the the scene. And then we're going to draw draw over the room. So we're going to draw a rectangle um, the size of the room. So this is the the section for the lightning, um, and we'll come back to that in a second. So that as far as the rain is concerned. Uh, all the step is, isn't actually going to draw any, anything to the room. It's just going to create a new sprite for the room. We're going to create, create one that's somewhere across the top. Um, and above the, the room, we're going to create a, a, a raindrop. We're going to set, give it a vertical speed and horizontal speed. And then the surface Y is a variable I created for, we want it to go so, so far down into the room. Uh, and then create the splash effect. So this is just determining some point vertically where we're going to set it to where it's going to create splash. 
and then this is kind of redundant. We don't need it, uh, but it was here to, re to reset it to normal, or we reset it to normal and get rid of it, and then reset the target. So that way other things can uh, use a different surface if you have multiple surfaces. So these last two are just uh, deal with creating the lightning. Uh, so the lightning, uh, when we create the lightning, we're going to create an effect, and it's going to set the color. And we're similar to what we're doing here in the blue. We're going to draw white to the entire room, and then our fade is going to be determined by how many steps we're, we're going down. So our fade will be um, this calculation as far as how quick, how many steps we need to fade, and then how quickly it's going to fade. Um, and if we've faded far enough, um, we're going to set it to false and stop stop this portion of it. Um, I had three different types of lightnings I created. One is a, a just a consistent uh, step down uh, of type of lightning, one that's bright real quick and then slowly fades out, and then the other one is it's white longer, and then when it starts to fade out, it'll fade out quickly. And, and I'll show you that when we get there. So that's what we're doing in the strain generator. So the rain generator creates the drops. Uh, we overlay everything with blue. We're overlaying that with the white for the, the lightning. So if we go to the drops, so we're creating the speed. Um, we have no animation. So we're going to just set it to zero. We're going to pick um, which type of either short or long uh, uh, image for the, the rain, how bright the, the rain is on the screen, and then the color. So we're going to make sure it's blue. It's just a random color of blue. And then the steps, this is very similar to what we had before. So the depth is created. Then if we've hit our magical surface, we're going to uh, choose whether than that we're going to show a splash. So And then we'll pass the brightness of the, the drop in there. Down here we're going to check to make sure we have a surface. Set the surface so we can draw to it. And if, if we're raining, we're actually going to go through the steps of um, drawing out. We'll draw out our, our raindrop and then set it back to, to our default, and then set reset it. So in the draw event, we're actually not drawing the sprite since we're drawing to the surface, which is what is getting rendered, and not the actual sprite. And then when we hit the magical surface, we have the splash. And what it's going to do is, so if I have it, if it hits uh, the house or some object in the environment, it's going to do that vertical splash versus a, a puddle splash. Otherwise, it's going to pick between the puddle or the vertical and then just vary the different speeds that it's going to splash to give it different velocities. So each step will similar thing. We're going to draw this basically to make sure we have the surface, set the surface to draw to, and then we're going to go ahead and draw it to that surface and then reset everything so the next thing can use it. And after the splash has occurred, we're going to go ahead and get rid of this. Um, and again, there's no actual draw event. So let's go back to where we see that. So I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to show this one where there's nothing in there other than these three objects. And then my character. So here we go, uh, walking around the water. The water is there. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you really wanted to, you could get rid of the shadow. You don't necessarily, obviously don't need it during during this event time period, but uh, it's up to you whether you want to. Uh, the rain effect is still pretty nice. So the as far as the lightning goes, and it, as you can tell, we have the different splashes. There will be, depending on, on what you see, there might be different splashes. And the other is the, the lightning. Um, so this is the vertical. It, it fades out at a certain rate. Um, if we change it, this will be a fast fade out, but then stays around longer. 
just a little bit of a difference. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, and the other one is this one you'll be able to definitely see. It'll be bright longer and then fade out quickly. So uh, yeah, just different different math formulas will be able to determine how quickly uh, so linear uh, fade out longer and then the long fade out. So anyway, if uh, you find this interesting, um, go ahead and like and subscribe. Uh, next time, I think we'll uh, uh, add some more things to our to our game. Um, until next time, good luck coding.